My name is Chandler Ryan. I am in Berkeley, California. I'm from the East Coast. Very near Sasha. Yeah, you are. Certainly are. Um, yeah, I moved here nine months ago. And it's been really interesting. Um, I... What are relevant pieces of information? <laughs> Uh, I like grew up with a trash picking mother like my my family when we saw a piece of furniture on the side of the road we were pulling over and Robin ever since wow we, we love yeah. your family yeah Robin was the OG my parents would like be like okay sweetie like let's go to the hardware store and pick out your quart of paint you can have for your project and I'd be like okay mom Sounds good. That's amazing. That's that's great. Um, and what was the motivation behind this? Like creativity, sustainability, or just like anything else? I think growing up, it was um, mostly like creative and financial motivations. Um, just, you know, like, growing up in a family with three kids, and, like, I think for much of my life, my dad was the only one with, like, a full-time salary job, and so a lot of it was, like, you know, furniture is expensive, and um, just, like, having a lot of fun painting things and redoing things, and I think as I've gotten older and started, like, moving into my own places that I've had to furnish... I've started to really appreciate the sustainable aspect of it too. And I think that's kind of come to the forefront for me. Um, and like, you know, the opportunity to keep like really beautiful, well-made pieces out of the landfill versus like going buying a new MDF thing at Target, which I also sometimes do because sometimes you just, you know, need a chair and you can't wait around to find one on the side of the road. But sometimes you do find one on the side of the road. And that's amazing. Yeah, I feel like there's, like, that rush where you, like, see something that you've been looking for and you're like, wow, there it is. Yeah. It's right in front of me. Yes, I know. And then you can, like, see the vision and nobody else sees the vision, but you're so confident. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I feel like one of the things, um, just for anyone who doesn't know, uh, I recently moved to Vermont from the East Bay in California, so that's Oakland, Berkeley, a few other places. Um, and so Taylor and I hung out a few times when we overlapped there. And one of the things that we talked about was just like the stuff on the side of the road, which is its own separate discussion that deserves its own newsletter. <laughs> stuff on the side of the road in the East Bay. Um, but I think from where we're from, like, that happens sometimes, but it's not to the same magnitude. <laughs> um, yeah. And I don't really know how else to describe that. Um, I know. I've, I've, like, tried to think of what to call that phenomenon. And then I end up being like, I found this on the street, and people don't really understand what I'm saying if they don't live here. And they're like, what do you mean you found it on the street? Like, you stole it? Like, you... I'm like, no, 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 no. It, someone put it out there with the intention of it being... Upcycled. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. And that's like, like it does happen in other places. It's not unheard of, but it's just yeah. the scale of it is is yeah. indescribable. Yeah, and I remember the like the first or second week I moved here, I met up with you and asked you about this because I was like, what is happening? Because you know we we grew up in a very similar area, and I'm like. Like you're saying, there's sometimes were things on the side of the road, but once I moved here, I was walking around in this new place I'd never been before, and there was just things everywhere. Like, I would be, you know, texting my partner, Meg, and be like, hey, like, there's a dresser on the side of the road. I know you're in class, but I think I'm going to bring it home. And I would. I would, like, drag it down the street by myself, and it's a very interesting cultural phenomenon. And I think you and I talked about, like, why it was happening 
like both why it's possible and why people do it we talked about the weather i think because yeah. it doesn't rain very much here and so it's like you can put things outside and they won't get damaged and then also it's interesting because i think the thrifting culture out here is really different where i feel like on the east coast where we grew up people really bring things to goodwill or salvation army and here there's not as much of that like you'll go to thrift stores and there's not very much in them and things are just put out on the side of the road yeah um maybe it's just that people know that someone will take it and yeah. like it'll find a good home yeah um like maybe it's a population thing too like there are just so many more people in the bay yeah um but so do you have a word for like um finding something on the side of the street and then taking home and like redoing it is there like what would you call that do you have a word or do you just call it taking something from the side of the street (laughs) um i think growing up i called it trash picking Mm -hmm. and like when i text my parents excitedly that i found something that's what i say i did because that's like the language that we share um but i think i don't know i feel like here i kind of call it like found objects or upcycling honestly yeah yeah, what do you call it? Um, I, I'd say um, trash picking, too. Or I would call it, like, furniture, furniture makeovers, I think. Yes, which is probably, yeah, yeah something fun on the, <laughs> I saw on the internet or something like that. Um, yeah. Or reno- furniture renovation, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, um... If I want to be really fancy, I, call, I say I'm refinishing something. Refinishing. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> when I'm reading the room, feeling the fancy vibes. <laughs> um, and, like, what have you been, um, uh, refinishing these days? <laughs> uh, well, okay, so... When we first moved here, I did a couple projects, which, um sadly have left my life because of a different phenomenon in the Bay Area, rampant mold. Mm. Um, <laughs> but those were beautiful while they lasted. I think my most recent projects right now are this hutch that I've been working on, which is like over here, um, which I found. It's also funny. I think something that I also really appreciate is that, like, I am kind of a woman you know I'm like not I'm like pretty strong but I'm like not the strongest in the world and several times I've been trash picking something other people have like come out and helped me put it in my car like with unprompted which is I think is really funny and sweet um but this large object I found they had like broken glass in it it like smelled kind of bad and I knew that we needed something to like put our TV in and kind of control the clutter a little bit because Meg has architecture stuff everywhere. And I got this and I've been working on it for probably a month. It's just been sitting outside, but it's almost done. I just got like the final hardware that I need, so. Amazing. Yeah. Are you Um, excited? I'm very excited, yes. I am so excited to finally have it like done and have the doors on and be able to like bask in the glory that I had a vision and it came true and do you feel like that feeling would compare to going to a furniture store and buying a similar object new no definitely not I mean I think like in in some I don't know it's hard to know because in some ways I feel like this, this, to me, feels like something I created that's, like, my version of a very adult piece of furniture that I wouldn't be able to afford or even find, really, because there's so many um, supply chain issues right now. Yeah. I feel like it's also a big part of the reason I was really motivated to start, like, upcycling and redoing furniture here because I just couldn't find furniture, even on Facebook Marketplace or, like, at secondhand stores. 
but it's such a gratifying feeling to know that I like touched every little piece of this furniture. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the customizable aspect of it too? Like being able to paint it the color that like matches the rest of your room or, um, putting on your own hardware. Is that something that you find satisfying or do you think that buying something new, like you would be able to find what you're looking for? I feel like it's really hard to find exactly what you're looking for when mm-hmm. buying. Do you feel like that? Yeah, I do. I feel like usually when I'm I'm going to a store and like looking for something specific, like the object is not there unless I'm not looking yeah. for it, which is yes. annoying. <laughs> but you can just totally circumvent that problem by like recreating something. Um, cause like, it doesn't matter if it's available or not. It's like, you have free reign over a piece of furniture. Yeah. I feel the same way about clothing a lot of the times actually too, which is a part of the reason I sew because so often I'll have like a piece of clothing on my mind and I'll find something that's so close, but I'm like, why did you put this strange shoulder cut out on this really cool shirt? Like what's happening there? And so it's just. I was about to say easier. It's not easier. It takes a lot of work to do, like, the projects we're talking about. But I feel like for me also, it's been a really nice thing to do during the pandemic because, you know, I'm, like, not going out to bars or things like that. And so I have a hobby I find really fun and really, like, meditative that I can do at home. Yeah. And do you, like, do you and Meg work on things together um, sometimes? Yeah, <laughs> it's, um, Meg has a lot of like work experience in contracting, um, and so it's kind of a funny d- dynamic in our relationship because she has a lot more experience than I do in like woodworking and projects and things, um, and so she loves doing things the right way, and uh, I am a little more uh, haphazard, and I'm like, oh, it'll be fine. Like, let me just slap some paint on here. And she's like, no, 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 you should do it the right way. I'm like, uh, it'll be okay. Nobody's paying me for this, you know? Like, I'm not working for somebody else. It's just me. And so if I want to do it a weird way, I can. But it is it is definitely fun to, like, brainstorm with her and, um, you know, like, get her ideas. So how do you, um, how do you bring stuff back to your house? Oh, many ways. Uh, by foot, by bike, and by car. We have we have a Subaru Crosstrek, which mm-hmm. actually is like a bigger capacity than I think I expected. So a lot of things I can fit in there, and I'll do that if it's further away. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been known to carry smaller pieces of furniture on my bike while biking home. Like I'll just be biking home from work, and I'll see something. And, you know, it's, it's like, you can't, you can't put something on hold when it's on the street. Like, if you see it, you got to go for it. And so I, I'll bike home with, like, stools and stuff on my shoulder. Um, and then I also, at times when I haven't had the car, when I get out the car, I have, like, drawer by drawer and then, like, wobbling a piece of furniture, move things by foot, like a big dresser. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. do you live on the ground floor? Uh, yes. Okay, good. So no <laughs> stairs involved. <laughs> no, no stairs involved. Yeah, which is good. But then it's like, you know, me. So I've a couple times gotten lucky and borrowed a carpet dolly from someone. But most of the time it's me just kind of maneuvering my way around a baby furniture, like with the towel sometimes just dragging things. <laughs> yeah. I think we've talked about this before that if you're determined anything is possible yes yeah absolutely yeah 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 (laughs) awesome um so you mentioned that you also have been sewing a bit Mm -hmm. do you like um kind of repurpose fabrics or is that more of like um starting from scratch kind of both um I do make a lot of things 
from scratch and sometimes with new fabric but I also um early on in the pandemic uh Meg's Meg and I were like staying with her parents and her mom had this huge bin of fabric that she had like collected over the years and some fabric from Meg's grandma and I was using a lot of that fabric to make things like masks and aprons and things um and I also have had a lot of fun taking existing pieces of clothing that are either like thrift or torn or just don't fit anymore and making new pieces of clothing out of them um, as well as like sometimes I'll thrift fabrics like an old sheet or something or a blanket and things out of those which is fun that's awesome um where did you learn to sew um from my dad actually uh I think actually it was combination okay so my dad is a really cool unique dad and he is very meticulous and he made me these amazing Halloween costumes when I was little like Laura Ingalls Wilder like House on the Prairie and then I think I was like a, a colonial woman one time I was a strange kid um but he made these beautiful ones and I just kind of picked it up from him and then also at my public library Bethlehem Public Library gotta love it I did a sewing camp when I was maybe 10 um and then didn't do it for a while. And then honestly, like YouTube videos, I think TikTok has really inspired me in a lot of ways. I know you are on there too. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm 10 years like late to everything. Well, in this case, I guess like one year, but TikTok's great. Yeah, it's so inspiring. There's just so many people doing cool projects and I think also it's like, like, I will always have four different projects I'm working on at one time and they're just like scattered all over my house. One of the things I'm working on is making this vest that I saw someone else have and knew it was like really expensive. And I, I just, I think from all the projects I've done, I just have this like unearned sense of confidence where I'm like, oh, I can make that. Like, no worries. <laughs> Without a pattern, I just kind of like, get crafty 